Okay, guys. So, Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin. Finally, 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 we got rid of Christy Sides. And listen, I'm going to get into my thoughts on that in another video about, you know, all the things that Christy Sides did wrong, could have done better, and some of the things she did do well. But she's gone now. And it wouldn't be a Caitlin Clark topic if you didn't have progressives, <laughs> progressives online whining about her race and her privilege. It wouldn't be a Caitlin Clark story. Now, of course, those other players won't have to speak out against their fans. They won't have to say a peep about it. They won't hear about it. No reporter will bring it up to them. Not even Indiana Fever reporters. But let's see what's going on right now online about Caitlin Clark and her coach being fired. So we got this sister who I'm 1,000% sure was tweeting about the WNBA this time last season. I'm positive, man. Um, she says, is Caitlin Clark going to be labeled as a coach killer based on Christy Side's termination? Well, that's just only a label for Angel Reese and the white supremacy that goes behind that statement. <laughs> And they wonder why Americans are starting to reject this stuff. They're pushing too far with it. This whole white supremacy thing, they're pushing it too far. It was already just a flawed concept, but then they kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Ma'am, Angel Reese's dynamic with her coach was different than Angel Reese's. Angel Reese's dynamic with her coach was different than Caitlin Clark's dynamic with her coach. Okay? Angel Reese had like a friend or sister-sister dynamic with her coach. She had a long leash. And Angel was given latitude to do whatever she wanted. Angel was given preferential treatment over other players on the team. She wasn't disciplined. The whole season be became about getting her double-doubles at the detriment of her teammates. Caitlin Clark, on the other hand, that wasn't the dynamic between her and Christy Sides. They had a different dynamic. So to call Caitlin Clark a coach killer just because people called Angel Reese a coach killer, well, that's DEI, I guess, right? So equity, right? You call Angel Reese a coach killer, so we got to call Caitlin Clark a killer. It doesn't matter the dynamic, the situation, the factors. None of that matters. This one, she's black. They called her a coach killer. You got to call the white girl a coach killer. Is that the world y'all really want to live in, man? <laughs> Like, yeah, I think about that sometimes. Like, is this really what you want? This equity, equality stuff? It's it's all so tiring. It's all so tiresome. It's so boring at this point, man. Um, but yeah, so Caitlin has um so white supremacists are accusing Angel Reese of being a coach killer. And they're not doing it for Caitlyn because she's white. So now to stay on the right side <laughs> of history, you know, you don't want to be known as an istophobe. So now people are, there's a chorus of people online calling Caitlyn Clark a coach killer. And most of those people 
don't understand the dynamic between Caitlin and, and K Coach Sides did everything she could to thwart Caitlin's initial attempt to, you know, force her style on the team and uh, initiate her type of game. Christy Sides thwarted that. She wanted to run through the veterans. She wanted Caitlin to know that, like, hey, man, you're just a rookie. You're new around here. We got a bunch of guys that's been here already and gals, and uh, you want to figure out the you want to find your your way in here, man. You want to you want to find your shots. You're gonna have to find your um your impact on the team, but we got a bunch of veterans that have been here. And that was completely wrong way to approach a generational talent, especially on the team coming off of 13 wins and a bunch of players that really are average. Kelsey Mitchell without Caitlin Clark is a borderline all-star guard. Leah Boston without Caitlin Clark is a, Top ten big girl, big woman in the in the in the WNBA, but I wouldn't say top five. I wouldn't put her top five big women in the WNBA. I wouldn't put her with John Quell Jones and Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson and De'Erica Hamby, and I wouldn't put her in that class with the Dom uh, Neka Bumake. I wouldn't put her in the class with the dominant bigs in the league, Aaliyah Boston. But Christy Sides wanted to show Caitlin that she was just, you know, another player. And that's that was just a bad, bad way to approach this situation. So the, that's a different dynamic. And because of that dynamic, Christy's no longer here. Um, but now Caitlin's being called a coach killer. <laughs> Which is funny, man. I mean, listen, it's all good. Fever fans, Caitlin Clark fan, we don't whine about stuff like that. It's fine, whatever. You have the right to say what you want on social media. Um, people said that about Reese, so the only diverse, equitable, and inclusive thing to do would be to just <laughs> call Caitlin Clark that without any context or any nuance. And who would have thunk it? We would get levity and balance and reason from Jamel Hill. <laughs> wow. She says, kind of felt like this was coming. Fever had a rough start and a great second half. But at the end of the day, when you have a generational talent like Caitlin, you must find a coach who fits her style of play exactly. This is going to be a very attractive job. So, wow, Jamel Hill. So we know that her next 10 tweets are going to be uber racist to make up for this. She got to wash her. She got to, like, cleanse herself of this balanced rational tweet so she's about to go <laughs> she's about to go full full racist in the next 10 tweets wow um salute to jamel hill this one says in in response to jamel hill's statement that this would be a great a very attractive job this one says, for who? Because they will be scrutinized and vilified if their girl isn't the center of everything. <laughs> and I said that much more nicely than I thought it. And listen, there's some truth to that. Um, that's how it works, man. Same thing with LeBron, man. Same thing with, well, you didn't have to see it with Steph. Because Steph, Steph I, mean, <laughs> I mean, listen, both coaches made Steph the center of everything. Um, the two coaches he's had since he's been in the league. Um, yeah, you're going to have to make 
Yes, you're going to have to make Caitlyn the center of everything. Yeah. Yes, that's that's how this works, man. This one says, I don't know what women's coach wants a job where they'll get blamed for every loss, get no credit for the wins, and face a fan base in a press corps that construes any things short of worshiping your star guard as an insult to her it calls for your firing on a weekly basis now i guess this guy doesn't know that christy sides was um coach of the month she was um coach of the month in um for the WNBA in um i want to say uh august yeah she was coach of the month so um she did get credit for something she had very little to do with. All she did was take the reins off of Caitlin. Start playing Iowa ball. Which I guess you can give her credit for that. And she won coach of the month. So you will get credit. But if you think you're going to have Caitlin sitting in the corner and have bums looking up. This is the thing you don't understand. This is the thing a lot of people don't understand. The first 15 to 20 games of the season, Caitlin never touched the ball in the half court. They never passed her the ball. And Christy Sides didn't do anything about that. Caitlin's teammates never passed her the ball. They constantly looked her off. And I'm not talking about just Kelsey Mitchell it was definitely Kelsey Mitchell doing it too, but all of them, Christy Wallace, Katie Lou Samuelson would never pass her the ball. Caitlin would bring the ball up, of course, get trapped, get blitzed, have to give it up and never see it again, ever. It's pointing, basically she's waving her off and she's letting her know she wants a screen. Okay, so she's telling Caitlin Clark, I want you to scream for me. And so you see Caitlin here. She goes. And I guess, I don't know, she's supposed to be setting a screen or what there, but if she did, she, she failed miserably. But in any case, so Caitlin comes over here. Then you've got Aaliyah. Now Aaliyah then is setting the screen for Caitlin to get the ball. So she sets the screen and Caitlin continues over here. But Mitchell, as you can see, ain't thinking about Caitlin over here. She She's over here. She already waved her off. As you saw, I'll back it up again. Her arm is out. She's pointing. Caitlin is calling for the ball. She's pointing, telling her, you know, basically no. And I want the screen. And so Caitlin comes over here. There she is, sets that. Uh, sort of sets that in front of uh, uh, Kelsey Mitchell's defender. Aaliyah Boston then sets that screen. Caitlin comes over here. Now, this would be a good time right here for Mitchell to get the ball to Caitlin. We know she can hit that shot. Remember, they're down five, and there's only one minute, 18 seconds. The screen is here. Caitlin is here. But Mitchell has already decided she's going to do her thing at that point. And so she does. She continues over to the right. Caitlin is still there. Now the defender comes, catches up to Caitlin, and Mitchell just dribble, 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 and then she's coming back on this side, and then now she wants to throw it over to Caitlin over here. After all the dribble, wasting. So that, that's something that the next coach is going to have to Fine tune that dynamic between Kelsey Mitchell and Caitlin Clark. Um, Kelsey Mitchell is going to have to start passing the ball to Caitlin Clark in her sweet spot. Kate, Kelsey Mitchell is just, she's resistant to passing Caitlin the ball. Now, Caitlin hooks her up with dimes all game long, but K Kelsey just doesn't like to return the favor. And it just is it's something that the next coach is going to have to step up and address. And Christy Sides' reluctance to do that for the entire season is something that I think messed them up because the reason Iowa ball works is because the other players have high IQs. 
Those other girls on that Iowa team, they all had high IQs, basketball IQs. They all knew who the top dog was, and they all knew where and how to get it to her in her spots. And they all knew when it was their turn because Caitlin was always dropping them dimes all game. It wasn't like they, they were starving. They were eating good. But they also had to get Caitlin the ball when she was coming left, drifting left, or when she was wide open from 30 feet. And that's something that's going to have to be fine-tuned and, and hashed out with the new coach. Christy didn't want to do that. Christy wanted to just act like it wasn't happening. She wanted to turn a blind eye and ignore it. And that was just something that persisted all year, even though Kelsey and Caitlin both had great years. It just kind of was just a, a it was a it was a kink in the chain, and um, stopped them from fulfilling their full potential as a team. Um, but yeah, so Caitlin's a coach killer, man, and she's uh, <laughs> she's got a. Um, Get the same treatment Angel got because, you know, they called Angel the coach killer when uh, her coach got fired. So now you got to call Caitlin the coach killer, um, too, because, you know, her coach got fired. It's only right. It's only equitable. It's only diverse. And it's only inclusive. Get in the comment section, man. Hit the like button. Peace. I'm out of here.